physics you everywhere. Essentially showing, so this is a, a resonator here, and that's just showing the resonance that it. I did more of the inactive experiments. Radioactive, is it really? British scientists have made a discovery. New discovery by British scientists. Frequent headlines in the news feeds. And you, friends, have you ever wondered where those very British scientists from the news who once again found out, discovered or proved something, studied or still work? And we not only wondered, we came to one of these universities. Hello, viewers of our channel, clients of Mariardi, and everyone who is interested in foreign education and universities in England. And welcome to the University of Sussex. This top British university is located in the city of Brighton, in the south of England. It is famous for many areas, business, economics, chemistry, the strongest engineering specialties, including its research activities and high-profile scientific discoveries. In this issue, we'll also drop by to visit the physics department and talk about some of the physics majors. A physical science, astronomy. Let's go in, shall we? Yep. Welcome to the School of Mathematics and Physical Science. But before you go and get to know the physics department better, I would like to suggest that after watching this video, you go to the other episodes about the University of Sussex. Especially as we have a lot to show and tell you, at University of Sussex, we met a lot of students who gave us a tour of their departments, told us a lot of interesting facts and life at the university, and discussed with us important aspects of employment and student life at Sussex. Meanwhile, we found the physics lab. Let's go inside. What kind of, um, kind of stuff are you looking to film? Oh, anything, really. Everything looks very exciting. Um, this so, so this is the Department of uh, Physics? Yeah? Okay. Yes, so uh, maybe show us some cool stuff. And yeah. maybe explain us what does it do. So this is the GAHF group. Uh, there's a what, sorry? Geonium chip group. So it's a novel type of plane of heading trap. Um, so we're in... <laughs> you might have to explain. Yeah. Yeah. Just in the more simple terms, if it's okay with you. Uh, what, what's the, uh, what's the kind of target audience for this? Is it most school? Well, we are a stu student recruitment, uh, agents. Yeah. So essentially what the, we're making is, uh, extremely sensitive microwave sensors. So microwaves are used in all sorts of things from communication to imaging, uh, medical applications, astronomy, and so on. Okay. So our device is, um, miniaturizing existing technology mm -hmm. so no normally normally you might have something that's more kind of this size here mm -hmm. whereas we're trying to shrink it down we get in close c so what what does it do uh so it essentially it, it confines a single electron into a region of space so oh, wow. that's purpose. but once you've got the electron in the region of space you can use the electron to exchange microwaves with the outside world so you can use that for imaging radar oh you can that okay yeah, so. that's why it's used for astronomy as well exactly yeah so they want really sensitive microwave devices as well so imaging sound as well maybe yes? probably not sound as far as i know but you know the application uh -huh. of these things are very broad so you know so basically what uh, you send the electron into space uh so the electron stays where it is uh -huh. and the microwaves go out and come back and then you can uh use those to sense what we've just been looking for. Ah interesting. Okay. All right. And is is this uh, piece of equipment expensive? Hard to put a price on. <laughs> so it is expensive. Uh, yeah, okay. it, was, yeah. it was expensive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what's the difference between this one and this one then? Um so essentially this one's just much larger is the main difference. They they're both going to do same thing the same thing but there's going to be much more space in this one mm -hmm. for perhaps multiple experiments to go on at any one time so they, these devices um they're cryogenic devices so mm -hmm. that means they get very cold so these will work at minus i think 269 degrees centigrade okay so that's why there's all this sort of apparatus here and the compressors down there uh, they're essentially very powerful fridge. And so, yeah, we work in a 4 Kelvin, which is the, 
the scientific way of saying minus two six nine mm-hmm. see um and we need that because to reject noise from the surroundings so in uh the the world around you there's some sort of microwave noise there are okay that will swamp your your quantum level measurement so a quantum level measurement is essentially saying you're in the, the extremely sensitive one or two photon kind of area mm-hmm. when you measure and what, what about those monitors what do they measure uh so that one's measuring our detection system at the minute so um, um this one here is um essentially showing so this is a resonator here and that's just showing the resonance that it's mm-hmm. there. The, re- the resonate it's a, is what you need to detect your electron essentially well it's uh, for undergraduates or postgraduates mainly uh, we have undergraduates as well yeah as well but yeah we have uh, phd students and... okay very good thank you very much okay this is the kind of research being done in a lab at the university of sussex what do you think let us know in the comments There are more labs to come, but if you are already interested in enrolling in the Department of Physics at the University of Sussex, then leave an application for your free consultation. Our managers will contact you and answer all your questions. We at Mariardi have been helping with admission to foreign schools and universities for over 20 years, and our students have studied at all sorts of prestigious institutions around the world. We are happy to help you realize your dreams and ambitions. Okay, so this is this is the lack, right? So this is one of the ones. The one of them, okay. And the undergraduates use this lab as well. Is is it just for physics or engineering as well? Mm-hmm. Just just physics, okay. Um, and what is this? It's a spectrometer. A spectrometer, okay. Something to do with light, yeah. Okay. And what what does it do? Just measures it. Uh, measures light. Kind of, kind of. It, it, it splits the light into its all its different colors, like a rainbow. Yeah, but it does it very accurately, and then we've got a detector so you can see very accurately each sample of the light. By splitting the light, you actually can tell how far from what our side. You can tell what they're made of. Yeah, even that it's analysis. So if we have like a sodium lamp in here, you look at the spectrum analysis and you could go, okay, that's definitely sodium, or it's got some contaminant in it or something. You'd be able to tell. Wow. Just by looking uh, at looking the lights, light. isn't it? Okay, interesting. And what's that? Um, so let's take <clears> a <throat> more nuclear experiment than it's about tips. Nuclear? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Radioactive. Is it really? I don't know if there's a switch in there. It doesn't look like there is a shooting them. And that, that, <laughs> that, very, that very, very weak sources, but no, it's, that's not what we're at. I'm not interested in that. I play like right. <laughs> so scare, scare students away. <laughs> okay. And what's up there? And um, well, I think this is the real. We've got a couple of fellas set up there. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, so I'm not saying in Chile, I'm going to go So it's, it's uh, astrophysics as well? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, to do physics at uh, university, obviously you have to do physics uh, uh, at school, right? Yep. As an A-level subject. Yeah. Any other compulsory subjects? Maths, maybe? Maths? Normally. Normally, yeah. Let's be clear. Adil isn't a physicist or likely not a mathematician either, but he's always been really interested in those areas. He studied different subjects at one of the UK's top universities. If you're curious about his experience, we're more than willing to share it with you during a free consultation. So this is just mostly empty space. We don't have a huge amount set up. There's a bit more on the other end, I think. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if we're not staying in phase of the physical COVID, we condense down the, uh, some of the experiments into little kits. So the mm-hmm. students have these boxes and they have uh, electronics components in them, which is why this end of the lab is quite empty. But but still, so, it's, so. it's a very hands-on, isn't it? So it's not just theory, theory, theory. You oh, have to touch and do things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Experiments? Yeah. How often? And um, they come in once once a week to do the experiment. Once a week. Once a week. Once a week. Ah. Uh-huh. Um, they do more of the you know active experiments. Thank you. Uh-huh. Touch and feel. This is something to do with the resistance, maybe no? It's Doppler effects. Whatever they say. That is, uh, you know, when an ambulance goes fast and the sound changes. 
Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's up. Dopper. Uh huh. So it's the changing of the wavelength of the of this new drum. Uh, the uh, sound wave. The name. Sound sound waves. And what 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 is it uh, used for in the industry? Uh, you can use it for all sorts of things. Uh, speed cameras use it. Uh, to detect how fast cars are going to have the camera jet. So yeah, 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 yeah. So they detect how fast cars are going to We're using the effect. Yeah. yeah. Really? They use, they use it for right. like, <clears throat> the, the cameras actually, I think, do it by, by timing because they, they have the lines on the road and they take big pictures. Yeah. But the C camera that the policeman has. Ah. Up with it. I think they use both, actually. In the mind, yeah, I think they back it up. Well, they, they probably decide when to take a picture. <laughs> Yeah, there's some there. In British universities, education is always practice-oriented. It is not only theory and in-lab experiments. Students are always engaged in what they will need in real life, and professors provide insight into how to apply a particular technology outside the lab. And what is it? Um, twists. Well, it's the Zeman effect. Yeah, Zeman effect. Yeah, Zeman effect. Zeman. 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 It's the name of a person. Can you demonstrate if it's not the. I need to close the buttons. Let's all pick buttons. Oh, right, okay. And the test one was. You see the same thing looking at the spectrum, but the spectrum is detected by a magnetic field. Ah. Or shift a little bit so that might be the magnetic field inside of a mark. Is it good enough? Yeah, okay. So if you look if you look in the right east there, you'll see. I'm looking in there. Yeah. Is it safe to fit? It is safe, yeah. You should be able to see the red lines. Oh, you see red lines, yeah. yeah. And if we add a magnetic field, you should see them splitting. Oh, uh, they're splitting. Ah, oh, you mean lines split? Yeah, they, yeah, they're splitting. They sort of separate out. And what, 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 what does it mean? The magnetic field? The magnetic field is affecting. Uh, yeah, it's affecting the light. Affecting the lights. So, so, so g g gravitation. If it's strong enough, then light can't go through it. Yeah. Yeah. Although well, that's been has not been oh, always there's. I mean, there are always Really? So I think light can get out again. Well, the information leaks out, and that's the Hawking radiation. Which Hawking radiation. That's, that's, uh -huh. that's uh -huh. something for the theorists to talk about. We can measure it in this lab. <laughs> yeah, I see. Okay. And uh, which uh, jobs uh, your graduates uh, get into? I mean, probably the range is so big, isn't it? Yeah, they go physics used everywhere. Huh? They get kind of all sorts of jobs. Um, in the, the very few, I think, who end up actually doing. Scientific work. <laughs> Scientific work, <laughs> yeah. But mm. they, they've got the background to do lots of stuff. Yeah. Anything from, you know, it's a lot of computer work, or should you get more of a graduate degree. Mm -hmm. Um, or well, some of the examples. And then one guy, probably engineering, they, isn't just They don't know yeah. A lot of people, yeah, then switch to do engineering things because there's awful money to be made there. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, we want to reset. <clears throat> Okay. Interesting. Thank you very much. But the most important thing to think about at the enrollment stage, and what we at Mariotti also always help our clients with, is job prospects. And of course, if you liked this episode, put likes and subscribe to our channel and also to our social networks. We will be glad to see you among our subscribers. And of course, we are waiting for any of your questions and comments. See you in new videos.